Hey, I'm Matt Porwell. I'm a documentary cinematographer, and today I'm here at Technicolor Postworks with Jack Lures. I just want to make a quick note that, you know, in a normal situation, we would have the lights pretty much completely down so that we could do a proper color grade. You know, for today, we've had to bring the light ambience up a little bit so that we can shoot this video. And so also a lot of the images that you'll see on the screen, it's not a perfect representation of the way that you see it in camera. But just know that we're going to talk through the changes that we're making here, and you'll get a pretty good idea of how it's being affected. All right, so Jack, give me an idea of what we got going on here. Okay, so what we've done is we've taken your uh, Canon files, your Cinema Gamut Canon Log 2 files, and we've loaded them into our Autodesk Luster system. That's our color corrector. And we're just looking at them in their raw state. Over here on the Canon monitor, we have it set up for high dynamic range, the HDR. And on the plasma up here, we have it set for Rec. 709. Okay. And right now, again, we've literally just loaded your files onto our SAN, onto our drives, and pulled it into this machine. So no correction, no LUTs or anything are applied right now. Great. So I guess for starters, why don't we take a look at this footage on the DPV 2410 and throw a look on that. Great. So I should also say as well, this is the look we just applied. I had a pre-grade already set up just so you could see it. Normally when you're on set, the high dynamic range is great to reference, but you'd normally be using the monitor in another mode, Rec. 709 or P3, and then we would trim past to this later. But just knowing that if you have a deliverable requirement for high dynamic range, that this is what it's going to look like. So you have the option would, with this monitor to, to spot check it, but you wouldn't necessarily be, be using this as its actual reference monitor. Correct, for grading. For grading. Normally what we would do is grade to a Rec. 709, world, and then we would use a LUT to get us into the high dynamic range world, and then grade from there. So this is just so you can see what high dynamic range looks like, color graded. Great. And so, you know, while we're looking at this, it looks like we've got, you know, it's a really rich image. We, you know, we're retaining a lot of the information, the highlights. But what I'm noticing is while it looks like that we're on the edge of clipping on our white point in this shot, Looking at the waveform, right now we're still just sitting around 90, so it looks That's like correct. we've still got a lot of room to And play. we can still go, even if I just lift our mids up, you can see how much brighter this image can get. And it's quite a bit of difference. This is where we just were, and this is how bright we've gotten. And what's the, the original log 2? And the original log 2 is this. Wow. So you can see how the image comes in looking very flat and dull, but you can see it can go quite a ways. That's a big jump. It's amazing. <laughs> and, you know, again, what's really, what's important to note here is while we're looking at this with the high dynamic range, if we look at the Rec. 709 monitor, it's a completely different image. I mean, the saturation is off, you know, it's washed out, it's bright. Um, so this is not something that you can just do kind of a drag and drop from one color space to another. I mean, when we're working in with high dynamic range images, you can't just apply that look straight to a 709 monitor. Correct, and currently how things work right now is that you would be mastering to another kind of format. So we would be mastering to Rec. 709 and then going to high dynamic range after that. Right. So um, we would get this to look right and then we would use a lookup table to get the HDR to look right and then essentially do a trim pass which is adjusting the color to make it look how you would like with the cinematographer in high dynamic range. So going to high, high dynamic range is effectively a second color grade. It is effectively a second color yep. grade. Okay. An easier one because we've done most of the work, so the LUT will get us 75% there, but it will definitely and take it's time to... fine tuning to, from there. Correct. Okay. All right, so you know, with this project, we're not going to be finishing in HDR. We're going to be finishing in Rec. 709. So let's go ahead and get swapped over so that we can work in that space. And that's what's great about this monitor is I can change quickly out of HDR and back to Rec. 709. So now here we are, I'm in Rec. 709, and it's looking like all of our pictures are starting to match now. So yeah, now you can see our plasma is matching to our Canon monitor. And you can also see just switching, you know, as you did, how drastically different the HDR is to the Rec. 709 space. So completely different, completely different species. Completely different animal. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. All right. Um, so why don't we take a look at, now that we have everything set up to Rec. 709, let's take a look at our footage back at just the, um, the native log2 file. So this is how you guys shot it. So literally now all we've done that's different is we still have your raw camera files loaded into the luster. And the only thing we've done now is switch the color space on the monitor to Rec. 709. To Rec. 709. Is it normal for your workflow to start with the LUT and apply that as a starting point, or what's your, your standard so, process? Uh, personally, what I like to do is, 
get the raw footage in. I like to get the LUT that you were using on set as a viewing LUT. And I like to rebuild and reconstruct that here in the luster and on our monitors, just to see what you've been seeing so I can get my head wrapped around about what your intentions were, try to push them further, try to finesse them. And you know, essentially, my job is to get what the cinematographer's vision is you know, together with the director. So what I like to do is get the raw file, put the LUT on, use it, see it, and then I like to take the LUT off and try to go further with it. So, so let's go ahead and throw that LUT onto this footage and see what it's doing. You got it. So here's the LUT just applied, nothing else going on. So just from looking at this, I mean, it looks like, you know, our, we've got a lot of saturation and it looks like we've lost a lot of information in our windows. Is that something that um, is the case or is that just how the LUT is That's just the LUT, how it's translating. And that's a great point because a lot of times people will come in freaked out like, oh my gosh, my highlights were blown out, but I swear they weren't. So then I take the LUT off and I essentially have done a, my own grade. It kind of gets us in the same world, but now you can see we have the detail back in the window. We have a lot more detail under the desk and the shadows. The monitor is great for that. It's showing you the highest highs and the lowest lows and everything in between, which is ideal and how everything should be <laughs> when <Great>. shooting, yeah. <laughs> so let's jump to one of the shots of uh, the factory floor. You got I want to see. So here's a shot again. This is in its log state. Okay, so this is straight state. out of the straight out of the camera at log two, right? That's correct. The director and I had had a conversation going into this where you know, for just a general idea for the look, we wanted to because we're working in a space that's that's kind of void of a lot of color information except for certain pops here and there. If we wanted to push our saturation a little bit and try to pull uh, some more of this color out of the information. So I prepped a look again without using the LUT. Uh, now, this is an immense amount of saturation. We have over 200%. It's a lot of saturation, and as you can see, uh, it might be a little too much. But just to show you, you know, you can really twist and manipulate the log two footage and get some stylistic looks out of it, which is, I think, important to know. Yeah, that's great. I mean, I would say uh, this is definitely getting in the direction that we're after. I think let's pull the saturation back a little bit. <laughs> so I'm pulling it back. We're just going to go to 120% yeah. saturation. <laughs> good, good. <laughs> and then I think the only other note is I would probably just warm up the shadows a little bit. You got it. So that's before you can see it has kind of a cyan feeling. And now I just rolled a little red and yellow in there before and after. And we also took out 70% saturation. And as you can see, the image is still holding together just fine. It has plenty of color. <laughs> right. So this brings up a little bit more of a generalized question. Working with log two in the cinema gamut color space, um, you know, talk to me a little bit about the options that this brings up and the flexibility that it brings up when doing a color grade. How much latitude do you have uh, to work with in color? The log two space is ideal just because it does give you full range in blacks. It gives you great range of highlights, and we can dial that stuff back together. And sometimes people want blown out highlights and we can do that, but what's nice about that is we can also dial it back. You know, you don't have to have that look. It's great to have the 15 stops of range that the Log2 is giving you. I prefer this method over shooting, just <laughs> with the LUT baked in, of course. And, uh, you know, we can pretty much do whatever we need to do in any style you want shooting in that mode. It has full range of color. Um, Really, the sky's the limit, or our imaginations are. <laughs> Great. So, you know, for this project, obviously, we're shooting in UHD, which um, is is being recorded at 10-bit color depth. Now, if we were shooting in full HD, we have the option of going up to 12-bit, as well as recording in 444 versus 422. Right. You know, these these are numbers that get thrown around a lot. So, you know, how does that play into your space? And are there advantages, disadvantages to to some of these settings? I mean, currently the way we deliver now for most broadcasts is going to be 422 10-bit files. That's kind of the standard and what is delivered currently. Of course, if you have the option to get more range and more bits, we'll take them. <laughs> so, you know, from a documentary perspective, one of the things that, you know, we're sitting here talking about you know, all of the available options we have with grading. One of the hardest things that I find in certain situations is just getting and sustaining a proper white balance, right? I mean, in some of these environments like here, every single one of the overhead lights was a completely different color temperature. 
So how you know does does the the color space and the log two and the bit depth of this camera give you flexibility in just being able to make wide shifts in say adjusting color temperature? Definitely, the log two space gives us all that range. It, you know where I really notice it is, it's pretty easy for us to white balance a camera that's not white balanced. It, it's a pretty basic maneuver. What's harder sometimes is if you're shooting, for instance, indoors and you're going outdoors to a super bright area and you have to quickly shift your iris, you know, close down. We can adjust with that log too. We still have the stop range to make that transition very smooth. And although it might seem extremely harsh as you're filming and you might be thinking like, oh, I just got the subject exactly what I needed to say, said it perfectly, but man, that exposure shift was, it just killed me. When you bring it here, the log two is giving us the advantage to bring it all back together and remove that bump. Oh, that's really nice to know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, one of my, you know, favorite things was, was coming into the color grade with the original C300 and working with that footage. And that footage was only at 8-bit. So to, to kind of see what the available options are now with the C300 Mark II, with the new Log2 Gamma, and being able to record in 10 or 12-bit color depth, I mean, this is opening up a whole new world for me. I agree, you know, and we did a lot of work with the old camera too, the older model, and uh, the newer one, just playing with this footage recently, it just has a more organic feel. And I feel like you're getting the detail in the blacks, things are a little crisper, you're getting in the highlights, and overall, a great improvement. That's great. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into uh, to another shot. You got it. I think, you know, I think if we can just see the, the native LUT thrown onto that for starters and see what we've got. Here's the load. All right. Yeah, I think maybe we can strip that away and we can just start to, to build up from, from scratch. You got it. Cool. So thanks, everybody, for watching. I hope that this conversation was insightful into this side of the process. And again, thank you to Jack and to Ben uh, at Technicolor Postworks. This has been really helpful for me, and I hope it's been helpful for you. So thanks again for watching.